I want to talk about racism in the church. I've done a video about this before and I'm going to talk about it again, guys. There are lots of people that's not going to see the face of God because they are racist. Blacks are racist against whites. Whites are racist against blacks. The Indians are racist against the, the Africans. The Africans are racist against the Americans. The, and even within their own nations, certain classes of, within all races, within every race, black, white, Indian, Asian, Asian is considered Indian as well, uh, whatever, whatever, Mediterranean, uh, whether you're from the Middle East, wherever you are, there's racism even among nations. So you find, guys, this is a spirit that wants to nestle itself among people, no matter who. Because there were racism even among, it wasn't only just white people and Europeans that were killing black people. There were black people killing one another. There were tribes killing one another. It's the same thing among white people. Black people were slaves, yes. But there were also other people who were non-white that were slaves. all over the world. We just have to study history. In the United States, there are many people that were oppressed. The Chinese, that's how come the, 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 the railroad was made here, the Chinese railroad. The transcontinental was made. railroad. I couldn't think of the name, guys. Chinese people were mistreated. The Japanese people were mistreated. Any race that was non-American that came to America, they were mistreated at some point. Horrible racist laws. And at some point, they were even, um, they were in concentration camps, but there were these places that they placed the Japanese people. They like, they're away from everybody else. And then of course we know about the history of slavery in America and the, the ongoing racism that it may not necessarily be as it was back then, even though it's trying to come back, you see that spirit trying to rear its head again. Um, but I believe this is happening because the Lord is bringing exposure. There has to be an ugliness that's shown because God is going to make some changes, but what I'm saying is it's just a different type of thing. It's subliminal racism as far as, you know, where they're going to, they're going to hire you as far as where they're going to give you loans for a house, as far as just how you're treated, the type of jobs that they'll give you. But racism is something that's going on. It's not just a thing that's happening oh, out in the world among the unsaved, but it's happening in the body of Christ. And it's happening from one race to another race that's different. And then within your own race. I can tell you being a black person, um, I'm not American, I am of Caribbean descent, I am West Indian, I'm from Jamaica, but most of my life I was spent raised here, but I was in Jamaica long enough to see, I went to school there, I saw some things, and even when I moved to America, everybody in the house is, my parents are both from Jamaica, and all you hear is, you know, they speak, um, it's English, but it's Patois, and they're, they're speaking Jamaican, and we're around the culture, the food, everything. That was just nonstop, okay? And every year, we took a vacation to Jamaica. So family and everything just full of Jamaicans and everything. But even in our culture, you'll see different things, the lighter versus the darker. Guys, the Willie Lynch letter, the Willie Lynch theory, if you ever have a chance pull up and Google the Willie Lynch letters. And this is something that Willie Lynch, he was a slave um, owner and master, and he wrote to the different slave masters. He gave them this letter of how to keep slaves in line. And this was an American thing, okay? This happened in America, but this mindset still is around, still goes around in many nations. And the thing is, culturally across the board that I have found, I could be wrong, is that there is a mindset of lighter is better. So you find people who are bleaching their skin or scared to tan and then looking down at people who are dark skinned. 
And guys, when you look down on God's creation and when you look, you feel like you can uh, exert yourself over someone that God has created because their lips are different, their body is different and all of that, you're going to be held accountable for this. So Asians, darker Asians are looked down by lighter Asians. You know, dark, if you're dark skin as a black person, oh, they're looking at the girl with the light skin, the boy with the light skin. They're the, the, the guy that has a lighter skin. Oh, God forbid if they have, you know, gray eyes or light eyes, you know, they, it, <laughs> and the hair is wavy. Oh my goodness. If a sister girl could get her hair that, that's touching her neck, ooh, uh, it, it's just a huge deal, guys. And what is it? It should not be. People are looked at, right? People look at different people's hair texture. This is bad hair versus good hair. That is just crazy. But if you study, I'm glad now that they have videos and things of that nature that shows the versatility of black people hair that it, you don't need a perm. Okay, the, the, the black hair is just one. It can get kinky. It can shrink. But when you add heat to it, it can just be just as long and as wavy as anybody who's non-black. There's just different elements to the hair. But it, and, and someone's hair is long and corn silk and straight all the time. It does not make their hair boring, okay, or anything like that. That's their hair. But you don't have better hair than someone else. But these terms of good hair versus bad hair this these terms of light and dark this this term of the rich middle class and the poor this comes from society and the world but strange enough this mindset this 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 racism is in the church and god is calling his people to accountability You've got to get past your cultural norms. We have to get past it. The things that's been normal, the things that you've been taught, the things that's just how I was raised. That's not going to be an excuse when you stand before the Lord. The Lord is here to make us a new creature. Old things, including those beliefs, have to pass away. They can become new. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has come to lead us and to guide us and to teach us into all truth. There are many people who are in relationships simply because they deliberately chose that relationship because ain't no way I'm going to have a child that's dark as me. I want a mixed baby. And if that's the reason why you had your relationship, that's completely wrong. There are people within the body of Christ they are going to be nice to certain people. They go out of their way. They'll greet people at the door, be loving and kind to certain people based on how they look, based on their status and everything. But we're talking about race here. So they, this person looks like me, so I'm going to greet them. I'm, then when another person's coming in, I'm going to just act like I'm trying to find some pamphlets or I'm so busy or my face absolutely changed from smiling to just nothing. Because uh, these people right here, mm, how do they find our church again? Okay. <laughs> I remember visiting um, a Chinese church. There's a Christian church. And it was quite interesting. And I went in. And guys, you know, when I got in, they were just so nice. Before I got in, in the parking lot, there's some people that came up. And they were greeting me. And they were very kind to me and everything. And I remember seeing this white male that was in the church he's a white guy white american or he was white he's not one he's not he's not asian he looked me straight in my face and he just scowled he just had this look and i was not deterred by that i walked up and i saw him guys and he saw me because there weren't a lot of people there because i had to kind of he was the only person on the walkway to go inside the church and i said good morning and he just looked at me and just walked by like i wasn't there and there were a couple other white men within the church. It was only a few of them because the majority was Chinese. Um, I'm assuming white Americans, just how they talk. But, you know, we never know. When they saw me, none of them came over to speak to me or greet me like they were. I'm talking about the, the, the Chinese men and women were doing coming over and talking to me and they were sitting there and they were asking me questions and everything. They were friendly. Only one female, a white female that was in the church came over and spoke to me and introduced herself and all of that. But I'm not saying that there weren't any Chinese individuals in there who may have had their own mindset, but they were so surprised and they kept saying, Oh, are you a missionary? And I'm like, no, 
<laughs> and also, why did you choose this church? And not in a bad way. They, you know, they're just asking you, what made you come? And okay. And I remember one guy, you know, he came up to me, an a one Asian guy, he came up to me and was like, so, so what's your story? What's going on? You know, what do you mean what's my story? I just visited the church. Why, guys? Because there is a spirit that not only separates the children of God by religion. I'm, you know, this is this person is denominational, non-denominational, Pentecostal, Kojic. Then this other person is Baptist, and then I don't know other things. Okay, there are all these people that's believing in their own thing, and they tend to want to keep your own race together. If you're black, you go to a black church. The most you're going to do is probably go to a mixed church that's a little diverse, but not between black and white. That's it. You're not going to go to an Asian church. You're not going to go visit the Spanish people. You're not going to go visit the, you know, the church where they're Africans. You know, nobody wants to be led by the spirit of God to go beyond their norms and cultural norms. But we're all God children and when you enter into heaven it's not gonna be like okay this is the black section of heaven that's the the asian section and this is the white section and this is the you know uh other section no and so god is calling his people to the carpet because these things there's a lot of people that's doing a lot of things in the house of god and for god but they're racist and they're prejudiced and they have a lot of stereotypes. So that's another thing. There are people, they may not be necessarily racist, but they have stereotypes. They're just certain things they believe. And we've all been guilty of it. But the stereotypes comes from a place that is ugly and not of God. And we have to learn to see people through eyes, through the eyes of God. The second greatest commandment is that we love our neighbor as ourselves. This seems like a tall order and very difficult to do. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, the word of God says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. And so there's a lot of people, pastors, they only want certain kind of people on their staff. They will not hire certain people. They're not going to have a certain type of person being their secretary. They don't want this person being their greeter. They, they are picking a certain group. They're choosing people that looks a certain way and of a certain race. And if they want to just put that one person just so they can be right with the NAACP, they're going to do it. But they are not going to be giving them anything like where they're in close proximity or too much of a say. And sometimes when these individuals are working on the staff, they can be treated differently. There's also sexist behaviors going on in the church. People who are in the house of God that has a mindset about women and those who have a mindset about men and they just coming in with this whole abolitionist mindset and not abolitionist as in trying to free slave, but abolitionist is what I believe and I believe in this, is what I believe. And they're just trying to bring it in. But guys, we have to follow the principles and the word of God. There's too much hatred among races, the same race hating one another, treating one another a certain way. There are people that's eating out of the garbage cans. There's people in India, they follow the caste system. I'm not sure, I can't remember the name of the, the they're a god that they, that they worship there and certain groups, they will be considered to be the head. And another group is considered to be the legs, to be associated with the legs and the arms of this god and, and other parts and such. And then there's the untouchables. These other people, the god allows them to, they're treated like garbage and they're given the worst jobs and they're treated very poorly. This is not of God, but there are people who get to know God and they get saved and they still have that mindset. They're not going to fellowship with the untouchables. As a matter of fact, if they become Christians and they get saved, they're going to have their own church that's only going to have the desirables. Guys, we have to repent. Get before the Lord in prayer because... <laughs> If the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself, not your neighbor that look like you, 
Because when you see how Jesus walked, he did not just deal with, okay, I'm just going to deal with these person. I'm only going to deal with the rich. I'm only going to deal with the middle class. I'm only going to deal with my disciples. I'm only going to deal with this individual. He dealt with many different people. The Holy Spirit sent Philip to go and meet an Ethiopian ambassador. That's the closest thing. I believe he, he, was, he worked with Candace. Queen Candace, okay, of Ethiopia. So he he went, he sent him to him. Jesus went where people don't go. People were talking about Jesus because he was touched. The woman with the alabaster box, they were like, oh, why doesn't he know that this is a prostitute? He knows that, but he does not care about that. He cares about her soul. And so guys, so many people would miss the Lord. And there's going to be people that say, I don't believe that. Once I'm saved, I'm always saved. And I'm going to enter heaven no matter what. You better find that scripture that tell you that. Because I see a lot that says that's not true. That's not how that's going to go. If you want to bet your soul and eternity on it, that's on you. But it's time for that to end. The hatred. The dislike. The disdain. Those of you that's married interracially, check your heart. Because there's many people you married because you hate your own people. And you talk about your own people. And you dog them out. And the funny thing about it is, what are you, the last of the Mohicans? Are you the decent one, the only one left? And when you do that, it's, it's like you make yourself like a charity case. They saved you from yourself and those like you and everybody else that looks like you is, is you're the one that's different. And so sometimes it's a pride thing and a, a self-hatred and hatred for others. So your children, everything you begin to teach them things to have racism against certain people and to not like certain people and not to associate. And your whole life is built on, oh, look, I produced some beautiful kids that ain't all the way white and they're not all the way black and they're not all the way this and I've done this and that. And guys, God's going to hold you accountable, especially for the poisons that that you may already be sharing with them or they see it. You're teaching them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever includes those that you are racist, sexist against, whosoever included people who have been killed, who have been enslaved, who have been murdered, who have been massacred, mutilated, put in concentration camps, he died for them too, but someone, a group of people felt that they had the power to get rid of them. And this comes from a demon. Guys, racist, racism is demonic. It's evil. Because when you see racism manifest on people, their face gets so contorted. It's an ugly spirit. And the other thing about it is, especially with people who's in the KKK and other things, if you're proud of what you're doing, take the mask off. And then you have fun, those that do it. But what you notice, you're not going to find one racist man going into a, a, a neighborhood or a female with a bunch of people. It's a cowardly act in a lot of ways because they get very empowered together. It's a bunch of them that goes and they, they pick on somebody or you see things happening where they'll handcuff somebody and then start to beat them up. They're not fighting man to man. They're going to handcuff you and, and, and beat you and, and whatever. And God looks at that. But the funny thing about it is this is not just the world. There are people who are sitting in the house of God that are members of the KKK. There are people that's preaching and teaching that praise and hails them, that despises black people, that despises certain people. There are people who are, 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 are black that hate white people and they say that they're the devil and they're this and they're that. And they'll preach things about killing the white devil. This is not of God. This is not what Jesus believed in. And then you have those that tell you Jesus is the white man's God. Because the white man did this and this. And I remember praying and asking the Lord for the perfect answer. And the Lord said, and when they're talking about Christianity, the white man's 
the white man's religion. And God said, I am not a Christian. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a Methodist. I'm not a Baptist. I am God. So Christianity and what they're talking about, he's saying, I am not that. I am God. And if people take his word and misrepresent it and do evil and use it for evil, that's not a representation of who he is. Because if someone steals your identity and runs up a bunch of credit cards and buy things and, 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 and does not carry out their, their obligation to their loans, but it's in your name, that's a representation of you. You get the bill and you're getting all the phone calls. And so now you have to prove it's not you. And it's the same thing. People, they don't believe in Jesus. I don't believe in this Jesus. Ah, da, 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 da. But Jesus is a historical figure. He is a historical figure. He's recognized by historians, archaeologists, science. All these things are here to prove a lot of the things that occurred in the Bible. There, there are artifacts and lots of things that prove that. But they, Jesus existed. The Jewish people, the Muslims, the Muslims, they acknowledged that. But they felt like he was just a man. So Jesus can be historically found if you really study and go beyond, you know, we didn't learn about Jesus in school, but he's a historical figure. He was real. He walked on the earth. He was here. And they also acknowledged that he was crucified. They can go to the place that he was at and they can go to the grave they believe he was in. But guess what? It's empty. Nobody can find the body of Jesus. And so you can believe that it was hidden all you want. But one thing nobody here can contest is that that grave is empty. And the, the most advancements in, in technology cannot find the body of Jesus. But we can go in the outer darkest parts of earth. I mean of space and down into the earth and find dinosaur and dig up all the pharaohs of old and all, all the stuff. But nobody can find Jesus. He's risen. But the Lord wants me to talk with you guys about racism in the body of Christ. It's a spirit in which you must be delivered from. You have to be delivered from it by acknowledging I am racist. I do think this way. I do have stereotypes. And asking the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you and to change you. Because many people are going to hear, depart from me because of this hatred in their heart. Because truly, guys, we are all made in his image and his likeness. So if you hate and you despise someone, you hate it and despise God. And therefore, you will be in violation of the greatest commandment, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And your neighbor as yourself you cannot love a person you cannot love God that you've not seen why you hate a group that you see because they look different from you God is calling for repentance guys time for change